for Nefertiti Porter. All right. Welcome to the Moth at the Arlene Schnitzer Concert Hall. I am convinced they wanted me to say all of that so that you would get accustomed to my accent. The theme of tonight's show is between worlds. Between worlds. Stories of sort of being stuck in the middle, maybe stories of being a fish out of water. Uh, and I can tell you that for me, in no other role in my life had then, did I feel more that way, more kind of, you know, between worlds and stuck in the middle and fish out of water, uh, than in my role as a mom. My wife and I, we have uh, two sons, uh, two boys. Uh, it is like the universe's little joke on the lesbians, you know? <laughs> so, you don't like penises, huh? <laughs> You're gonna be scrubbing balls for about the first five years. Um. <laughs> so I am actually gonna tell you guys a little story. Not right now, I'm not right now. I'm gonna tell you a little story uh, a little later on in the evening. But I would, what I will tell you uh, right now uh, is the reason why I'm going to tell you the story. Um, so this story I'm going to tell you later. It's the first and the only story that I have ever told about my children. Uh, and there's basically two reasons that I decided I wanted to tell it. Uh, the first one is a little unsavory, but I'm going to admit to it anyway. Uh, and that is just that I need to get some mileage out of these little fuckers, you know? <laughs> uh, my sons are three and six, right? And that is not an easy age. That is not an easy age for anybody. That is not an easy age for, obviously, straight or gay couples, uh, but if you're gay, you know, they weren't even free. Like, <laughs> oh, it's true. <laughs> it's true. No, that is not the real reason I'm telling the story. Not the real reason. The real reason I am telling the story is just that so many people ask my wife and I how we went about, um, you know, acquiring these little penises, children. People ask us, people ask us all the time. So this is gonna be kind of like part story and then it's like part public service announcement, you know? <laughs> part PSA, it's gonna be, basically it's gonna be like a lesbian baby making 101, okay? Does that sound good to all of you a little later in the night? All right. Are you ready for lesbian baby making 101? Here we go, only Portland. You're like, woo! <laughs> yes! Um, <laughs> I love you guys. Um, so, for our first son, actually things were fairly simple. My wife and I went to a sperm bank. We got sperm, she got inseminated, and nine months later, we had uh, our first child. But for our second son, things got a little more interesting. So, when we were ready to do the second guy, um, at this point, my wife was 42 and I was 32. We are 10 years apart in age. And so we go in to our doctor, the doctor who had helped us have our first child, and we go into his office and we sit down and we say, all right, we are ready now. Um, Shauna is ready to have our second baby. And we sit down and he takes a look at us and he goes, Medically speaking, <laughs> Tara, you should be the one to have this baby. 
And so right away, I said, no. <laughs> Just like that, you know? Nope, um, no, 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 no. Uh, and really and truly, right? Like, I, I want to be pregnant um, about as much as, like, that guy. Actually, that guy wants to be pregnant a little more than me, okay? <laughs> That's how much I want to be pregnant. All right, but he goes on and on in the medically speaking and yada, 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 and he convinces me that I should go home and I should think about it for one night. And so reluctantly, I agree. And I go back to the apartment, and my wife actually decides to, like, give me some space. She gives me the apartment to myself, and I go back to the apartment, and I am just walking around the apartment and I am like trying to hype myself up. You know, I'm trying to like hype myself up into the whole thing. And the only thing that I can compare what I am doing uh, in this moment to, it's like the same thing that I did the night before my varsity softball championships, right? <laughs> like I'm walking around the apartment and I'm going, let's go, baby. Let's go. Pregnancy in the clutch, right? And I actually go over to the mirror and I look, I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I start like puffing out <laughs> my shirt. Uh, and obviously I'm imagining myself pregnant, but what I'm really doing is I'm imagining somebody else seeing me, <laughs> me, <laughs> pregnant, right? And I'm imagining what they're gonna think and what they're looking at, you know, what they're gonna look at me and think. And so what I'm doing, and I'm totally unaware of it in the moment is I'm going, you talking to me? <laughs> you talking to the pregnant lady? You talking to me? It's like other women, they go home, they knit booties. I'm De Niro and taxi driver. Anyway. <laughs> it works. Shark of all shocks. Uh, I decide that I am going to go through with it. I do. Uh, and so I get all of this preliminary blood work done, and I go back into our doctor's office, and I sit down, and he opens my folder, and he goes, Tara, he goes, you know, you have a fertility problem. And I said, yes, I know. It's called being a lesbian. <laughs> Am I paying you for? <laughs> and he actually goes, no. He's like, uh, you have another one. And I was like, oh. And he's like, listen, it is not the end of the world, actually, but it just means that this time, instead of doing an insemination, we have to do an in vitro fertilization, all right? So the first, my firstborn son was an insemination, and now we have to do uh, an in vitro fertilization. And just for anybody in this audience who does not know the distinction between those two things, uh, an insemination is literally no more technical than a turkey basting, okay? <laughs> For my firstborn child, it was like, you know, my wife and I went to the doctor, and it's like, you know, she was there, and I was there, and there was something plastic in between somebody's legs, and it was basically just another Saturday night for a lesbian. <laughs> that gets a clap in Portland. Um, Now, in vitro fertilization is a surgery, right? It is a surgery. And it is such a common surgery that literally at this point in time, statistically speaking, literally 99% of the time, nothing goes wrong. Like either you get pregnant or not, but there's no other side effects. 99% of the time, that's the case. 1% of the time, however, you are me. I had this sort of very slim, potentially fatal, like, reaction to the first part of the surgery. So to the first part of the surgery is where they go into your body and they remove the eggs and they put them in a little Petri dish and they fertilize them. And I don't want to, like, bore you with any more science than that, but it was basically as if, after that first part of the surgery, it was as if, like, unbeknownst to me, my uterus had, like, low jack, you know, like a, <laughs> like a car, you know, alarm on it, right? It was like the second that the eggs came out of my body, my uterus was like, where, 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 where? 
Step away from the uterus. The police arrived at my uterus. It was terrible. Anyway, I almost died. That sucked, but then I didn't. And they were like, if you fully recover, we may be able to go through with the second part of the surgery. Uh, and so I had to wait for a month, uh, but the month passed, I fully recovered. And so we were able to go through with the surgery. So my wife and I go back uh, into the doctor's office again, and we sit down, and he's like, okay, everything looks good. He looks at the blood work. He's like, all right, we're ready to go through with it. Uh, and we are literally about to walk out the door when he goes, wait a second. There is, medically speaking, a better option at this point. And I hadn't thought of it. And he goes, and that would be for Shauna, that's my wife, to carry this baby. And he goes in to all of the incredible statistics and amazing science that makes this the case, but I am not listening to any of it because I am too busy doing the fucking jig. Da diddle 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 Sign her up! Da diddle 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 There she is! Da diddle diddle See you later! <laughs> Man, saved by the bell or whatever. But my wife, because I don't know, she's crazy, she likes being pregnant, she's like, sure, I'll do it. Um, I don't want to undercut the beauty of this next moment with a joke, um, but my wife went ahead and got pregnant with my baby. I mean, I was working on that for years, but thank you. She gets pregnant, all goes well, nine months go by, it's the middle of the night, and I get that familiar shake, right? And this is child number two, so I know what that means. And so I just hop out of the bed. I don't even look at her. I hop out of the bed. I get on my pants. I go to grab the hospital bag. And when I turn around to look at her, it's not good, right? Like, she has gone, like, zero to 100 real quick, right? Like, she is just, woo! She is screaming, she is yelling, she can't really get up. And I have this moment of panic, and I'm like, I knew this was all too good to be true, but I can't believe it. Uh, and I run around to her side of the bed, and I put her arm over, like, my shoulder, and I have to walk her uh, down our building, down the steps in our building, and I go running out with the hospital bag, and I flag down a cab, and we get into the cab, and by this point, she's, like, screaming even more, and we sit in the cab, and she actually starts, like, she lowers the window in the taxi, and she's got, like, her feet. One foot is, like, out, and she's like, ah! And so I lean into the driver, and I'm like, you gotta go through the red lights. You gotta go. He's like, are you serious? I'm serious. You gotta slow down a little, but then you gotta go through the lights, right? And so he zooms us all the way up to the hospital. We get there. She can't really walk. And so I get out of the taxi, and I get a wheelchair, and I wheel it over to her, and I put her into the wheelchair, and I go flying up the hospital into the maternity ward uh, triage area. It's like the waiting area, right? And I push her in there, and I take one look at the receptionist in there. I'm like, I do not have time to sign any paperwork. You just got to point me right now to an OR. And in the time it has taken me, to say that one sentence and to turn away from my wife, when I turn back, she is up out of the wheelchair. She's got one hand on each of the armrests. Her legs are spread. Her shirt is up. Her tits are out. Her pants are down. Her ass is out. There's pee. There's blood. She's like, ah! <laughs> There are all these women having normal labor sitting around her, like, texting their mom, like, I'm in labor. Oh, my God! <laughs> Baby bottle emoji. Oh! <laughs> and finally, this nurse, and she's from the islands, right? She comes flying into the waiting room, and she goes, she gonna have that baby on the floor? Get up in a gurney! She's gonna have that baby on the floor, get her up in the gurney, right? And here comes my ax, and I'm like, she's gonna have it on the floor, on the floor, get her in a gurney. <laughs> it's 
So they get her in a gurney. Um, enough people say it with enough accents, and it happens. <laughs> they fly her into an operating room, and about three seconds later, our second very healthy son was born. Thank you. Um, I do want to admit, however, that I now believe we named that child in vengeance. <laughs> my firstborn son, my firstborn son is named Ray. Ray Clancy. He will punch you in the nuts. <laughs> This second guy, we named him Harry. <laughs> Harry Clancy. He will sell you a used Honda. <laughs> Thank you very much.